I'm Tom Nicolai, and my presentation is about the inclusion of integrative medicine in European health care systems and the role Eurochem is playing uh, in that process. First of all, I would like to say a few things about uh, the terms. We are using traditional medicine, complementary medicine, uh, in integrative medicine. Traditional medicine, of course, is Chinese medicine, for instance, uh, uh, Japanese medicine, Ayurveda, Unani. Complementary medicine is um, the whole set of uh, healing methods that do not belong to mainstream medicine in the Western world. And traditional medicine, of course, and complementary medicine do overlap. And that's the reason why WHO uses the term traditional and complementary medicine, TNCM. Um, and how about integrative medicine? It originated as a response by some academic health centers to the growing demand for TNCM among citizens. And this is the um, actual definition in the middle. And the main principles are a partnership between the patient and the practitioner, mind, body, and spirit um, are all taken into, consider into consideration as uh, factors that influence health and disease. Uh, the body's innate healing uh, capacity should be facilitated and preference should be given to less invasive and less harmful interventions. Um, the term TCIM is increasingly used by WHO. You can see that on their website. Part of it is shown here. And what is Eurocam? Eurocam is a foundation that unites a European umbrella organizations representing patients using TNCM and trained TNCM health professionals, medical doctors, uh, practitioners, and uh, veterinarians. And through the umbrella organizations, Eurocam represents a few, uh, several thousands of organized patients around 250 national TNCM associations and a substantial part of the 400,000 TNCM health professionals in this sector in Europe. Our main aim is promoting the contribution of TNCM to sustainable patient-centered healthcare in Europe by facilitating its role in maintaining uh, citizens' health, by highlighting its uh, health promotion and illness prevention aspects for uh, EU public health policy and programs to advance its accessibility, affordability, and availability, and promoting its inclusion in healthcare systems leading to integrative medicine and health. This is a list of the current most common TNCM therapies in Europe in alphabetical order. Um, Yes, TNCM is a societal phenomenon in the whole Western world. It has to do with increased uh, personal responsibility for one's own health, a preference for a more holistic view on health and healing, uh, a preference for more gentle um, therapies first, and a dissatisfaction with conventional Western biomedicine because of the, its unpleasant side effects. Uh, treatment that is ineffective for their particular medical condition and its lifelong or and at least long-term drug regimens. One out of every two European citizens use TCM, TNCM, either by seeing a professional or using over-the-counter medicinal products. Up to 90% of people with current conditions use TNCM and the majority of EU citizens would like their conventional family doctors to be more supportive and more knowledgeable about TNCM. What about its provision in Europe? Um, I have some figures from 2014. They are not up to date, of course, but just to give you an idea. At that time, there were 150,000 MDs with additional TNCM qualification. You can call them integrative medicine doctors and uh, more than 180,000 TNCM practitioners without a full medical education. 
Um, as a comparison, uh, I have uh, listed uh, a few numbers of the medical specialists, and there you can see that doctors um, practicing acupuncture outnumber um, the ENT specialists, neurologists, and gastroenterologists altogether. Um, there are increasing numbers of GPs referring to TNCM professionals, increasing numbers of hospitals providing integrative health care, mostly outpatients. There are professorial TNCM and, and integrative medicine chairs in several countries, and there are familiarization courses in the undergraduate curricula at several European universities, at least in 2013, but the number the figures uh, should be higher by now. Um, when it comes to statutory regulation in the European Union, um, European uh, region of the WHO, 35% um, of the countries have T and CM legislation, 30% have regulations on individual T and CM therapies. But all these regulations and legislations are not harmonized. They are fragment, uh, fragmented. Every country has um, reinvented the wheel. Um, there are, there's no harmonized regulation of the, of the qualifications of TNCM professionals across the EU. And there is a lack of availability of TNCM medicinal products because um, EU member states put um, little effort in um, re registering and making available uh, of TNCM uh, medicinal products. There are several obstacles to the acceptance of TNCM. Uh, well, in Europe, biomedicine, of course, of course, that is <laughs> actual practice, is mainstream. Uh, so it is conventional medicine here in, in Europe. And uh, European health authorities cannot see that biomedicine is just a particular model of health and disease and that there are other models as well. So there is ignorance, bias, also reluctance to overtly uh, support TNCM among many uh, uh, European policymakers. Still, we are optimistic. We are engaging with several organizations, WHO, European Parliament, European Commission, ECDC, European Medicines Agency, European Public Health Alliance, European EU for Health, Civil Society Alliance. And just to start with the NGOs, uh, Eurochem is a partner of the, nine, the 18 main European and global health NGOs in Brussels in this alliance, and this alliance calls on the European institutions to do more for health. Healthcare is, uh, um, is managed by the um, European um, member states themselves, but uh, the alliance calls for more action from the side of the European institutions. Um, we, uh, Eurochem is also a member of the European Public Health Alliance, which is the main lobbying organization in Brussels for uh, on the field of uh, uh, public health. Um, so we participate in their policy coordinate, coordination meeting and in some working groups that uh, are relevant for us, antimicrobial resistance, access to medicines. And this way, we hope that this uh, European Public Health Alliance will um, get more, uh, get a more holistic uh, view on, on health and public health. Um, a few words about the EU institutions. The European Commission is the executive branch and they um, are um, uh, responsible for the day-to-day -day, uh, business of the European Union and they are also responsible for uh, proposing legislation. This is the building where they are located. The European Commission is, oh, this is a bit too quick. Um, here you can the European Commission, uh, all the commissioners, and here in the middle, you can see uh, Stella Kiriakidis, who is commissioner for health. And so we have to deal with her. 
The European Commission has several directorates general, the, the main, the, the main uh, director general that is important for us is that one for health and food safety. So we have meetings with their officials and we are part of the health policy platform where uh, stakeholders can, um, can uh, present their uh, view on particular proposals of um, the commission. Uh, we have also uh, meetings with DG Research and Innovation, and uh, we respond to public consultations of the European Commission, where stakeholders can uh, give their views on particular issues. European Parliament is directly elected by the EU population, is also, um, together with the Council of European Union, uh, responsible for European legislation. This is the building of the parliament. Um, there are several political groups, of course, from left to right, and you have to always find a sort of majority among the, uh, public, uh, the political groups to have your, um, to uh, get your amendments accepted, etc. The European Parliament has uh, quite a lot of uh, standing committees and the one that is responsible for environment, public health and uh, food safety is the ENVI committee. Uh, so that is the committee we are mostly dealing with. Um, they invited us for a workshop two years ago. Uh, you can see here on the panel some members of the Parliament, a uh, representative from WHO, from the European Commission, uh, someone from the research community, and some and myself from Eurocamp. Um, in the Parliament, we have set up uh, an interest group on integrative medicine and health together with some of the members of Parliament, which is a forum for discussion and action with all stakeholders regarding integrative medicine and health. And we uh, seek to raise awareness of integrative medicine and the contribution it uh, can make to a more holistic approach to health and to sustainable healthcare systems. We focus on the integration of these TNCM modalities into the health systems of the EU member states and promote the citizens' right to choose their own healthcare. Um, this interest group um, holds a few events every year to discuss the integration of TNCM and biomedicine with a specific focus on some of the challenges that affect the EU health systems, such as antimicrobial resistance, non-communicable diseases, chronic diseases, including cancer, aging population, high healthcare costs, etc. And we propose uh, political initiatives and legislative initiatives to promote integrative medicine and health and promote research into integrative uh, health and uh, establish a dialogue with the Commission and the Council on these matters. Um, so far, we have had uh, two events, uh, one in uh, 2020 and uh, last year and one in March this year. Uh, at these events, um, there are speakers from academia and also from the parliament, members of the parliament. Last year, uh, we had our launch ev event uh, with an introduction to integrative medicine, uh, the integrative approach in the, in the treatment of cancer patients in a network of 14 hospitals in Germany, the non-antibiotic treatment of infections as a way to reduce the problem of AMR. And this year we had uh, one on integrative oncology, including a presentation on its evidence base, reports from academic integrative oncology centers across Europe and a collaboration between several hospitals, clinics, universities and government in Germany. And we had live stream viewers, um, 1,500 live stream viewers, across Europe um, and even in other continents. Um, we organized a conference on AMR on the contribution uh, that TNCM can make to reduce the need for antibiotics. Um, there were presentations from researchers from several European uh, universities. It was funded by uh, a joint uh, group of health research uh, institutes in, uh, in the European Union. 
So it was very successful. We had a representative from WHO, from the European Commission, from the Parliament, from ECDC. This is the report that came out. And of course, last but not least, we um, engage with WHO. Uh, uh, not only with the, the, the central unit uh, at the headquarters in Geneva, but also at the European Union, a uh, European region. Um, at the headquarters, you know, um, the headquarters um, unit on integrative, traditional, and complementary medicine is led by Dr. Jiang Chi. We uh, encourage national TNCM uh, organizations to call on their national governments to implement the World Health Assembly resolutions on the integration of TNCM into national healthcare systems. And we promote WHO publications such as the Traditional Medicine Strategy and the Global Report on TNCM. You know these uh, uh, reports, I presume. Uh, as far as the regional office in Europe um, is concerned, we are accredited as a non-state actor. Um, uh, according to the WHO global report uh, on traditional and complementary medicine last year, it is very clear that Europe is lagging behind in recognizing the role of TNCM in their national health systems. So that confirms the need for more advocacy work in Europe. We are very happy with support by Dr. Tedros uh, in the preface of this global report. He says, Country aim, countries aiming to integrate the best of TNCM and conventional medicine would do well to look not only at the many differences between the two systems, but also, also at areas where both converge to help tackle the unique health challenges of the 21st century. In an ideal world, traditional medicine would be an option offered by a well-functioning people-centered health system that balances curative services with preventive care. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.